Good morning, everyone. My name is Doug Smith, and I'm here with John Parsons, and we are members of the Elgin County Railway Museum Committee, and uh, today we're at the uh, Michigan Central Railway Station on Sunday, August 25th, 1991, and we're having our Railway Heritage Day here, our celebration, our annual cel celebration, and we have in the background here the Canadian National Steam Locomotive 5700, and uh, people are going through uh, looking at the cab and we have the baggage car behind us as well. And uh, right now I would li like to ask Mr. John Parsons to tell us a little bit about his own personal history with the railways and uh, something of uh, this type of steam locomotive. John? Well Doug, I started railroading back in 1942 when I was 16 years old. Uh, I hired on the old Pierre Marquette Railway, which later became the Chessie System, then the CSX Corporation, as a machinist apprentice. I uh, served my apprenticeship there, and uh, at the end of steam, of course, the, there wasn't the requirement for the uh, huge number of shop men. There was probably 300 men working in the St. Thomas shops at the time. Uh, there was a great reduction in forces, and of course, I was out on the, what they call the boards at the time, and uh, I worked in industry for probably 12 years, and then I had an opportunity to go back on the railway, which I did in 1961, and uh, finished up there when they closed the shops in 82. And uh, when this uh, locomotive showed up for the, Saint, for the St. Thomas Railway Museum, of course I was vitally interested in it, and uh, have been working with the gang since. Yeah. So was there, uh, what kind of uh, condition was this locomotive in when it came here from Ottawa? Rel from relatively good condition, Doug, other than they uh, had painted everything, which... They had know, painted uh, everything uh, the right uh, color or the wrong well, color? Well, I won't say the right color or the wrong Things that were, uh, you know, were never were painted on a locomotive. They painted, like, your rods and things like that that uh, moved back and forth in I see those packing big plans. driving rods on Not the, the main rods, but the piston rods and uh, uh, items like this. Yeah. I yeah, see. That, uh, you know, sh that have to work back and forth and would never uh, keep a coat of paint on anyway. Right. So, so the, the locomotive uh, needed some work uh, to, uh, um, to bring little it... Little uh, maintenance work. There was things that we have uh, done over the years, or not years, we've had it about two or three years now, but uh, things that were rusted up. The bell didn't work till Saturday. I got a ha had to go with that, took it apart. and. Uh, got it working, and uh, we had a few things like that that uh, you know had never worked for years and needed cleaning up, some tender loving care, and a little grease and oil. And yeah. Now, uh, what uh, kind of a locomotive is this, John? Is it it's a Hudson. It's a Hudson. Uh, what does that by mean? By the wheel arrangement, it's uh, got two axles under the front, pony truck axles, three sets of drivers, and two trailing truck axles. Okay. So and it's known as a 464. 464. Four. Yeah. A Hudson, and this was uh, had something to do with the Hudson River. I'm not sure where it probably it may have been introduced. I think it the, has to do the with, the, uh, with the New York Central yeah. Hudson locomotives, which ran along. Quite the often, they uh, they took the uh, the name of the territory that they operated in primarily, where where that particular wheel arrangement was first in, introduced. Right, and so uh, what would this locomotive have been used for? What type? High speed, I would think lightweight passenger service. I see. And I think primarily it was used on the Montreal uh, Toronto corridor. I see, and. Uh, when was this locomotive built? 1930. 1930? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so now this is uh, locomotive is the pride and joy of the uh, uh, Elgin County Railway Museum Committee. And uh, where are we keeping this locomotive, John? Well, right now it's in the old uh, Michigan Central shops until such time as we can find a permanent resting place for it. Right. That and our artifacts. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, it's kept in there, and is it safe in there? As safe as we can make it. Yeah, uh, we're we're subject to vandalism, but uh, we've we have had a little bit in the past. Yeah, so basically, it's uh, there hasn't been any serious damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now uh, this Railway Heritage Day, this is uh, when uh, was this uh, first uh, celebrated, John? I think this is our third year. It's our third year. I think so, Doug. Yeah. And how are the crowds? How have they been? Have they been uh, very good? Getting, I would say. Any bigger yes. crowds every year? I don't know. It's uh, early in the day yet, to, uh, but if there's any indication of the people that are around here now, I think uh, we're yeah. in for a good day. Right. So now you uh, make model locomotives as well. Don't yes, you, I build live scale steam locomotives. Real Either steam. Real steam. Yes, yeah. they operate the present one that I'm operating has uh, is fired on propane, and it runs off 100 pounds steam, and it's a one inch scale. 
one is to the foot scale and I see. I've got another one underway. It's a Bear Garrett type locomotive that were primarily used in South Africa and it's a one inch scale but runs on a three quarter inch scale track because it's a narrow gauge locomotive. I see. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, uh, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you, Doug. It's and, been a pleasure. Uh, appreciate it. Take care. Don, would you have a minute to talk to us here? Come on over here, Don. Here's we got a conductor over here. We we got a conductor over here. This is Mr. Don Stokes. And uh, Don, what about your personal history with the railway? Well, I'm uh, something similar to what John was. I don't know what he told you, but uh, I served my apprenticeship with the New York Central Railway. These shops that you see over here were were presently keeping uh, number 5700, and uh, that was back in the 1940s that uh, I served my apprenticeship there. Since that time, of course, I worked for. Uh, the Montreal Locomotive Works in Montreal, where they built the uh, the last uh, steam locomotive. Actually, it was a, an oil burner at that time, a large, very large locomotive for the uh, Rocky Mountains, and that was the last one that the last steam locomotive they built by the Montreal Locomotive what Works. What wheel I, arrangement was that? Don't uh, I can't recall Dr. exactly. Uh, I can't really form? call. She's a very. Uh, it sounds I have. Re I, she was a very big. Uh, I remember the uh, locomotive in particular when they had her lifted up on uh, by the big cranes. That, yeah. uh, which way they still have over here, I understand. So. I see. So that was one of the biggest locomo steam locomotives that uh, they built there at Montreal? That I think, well, I don't know whether it was the biggest they ever built. Of course, uh, uh, the Montreal Locomotive Works was uh, going for a long time. In fact, it was the same, same uh, uh, company that built this here locomotive here. I see. And yeah. they, they built locomotives since the turn of the century, I think. So were you a machinist then, Don? Or? I was a machinist then, machinist. yes. 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 So. So you were making parts and pieces for these locomotives? Yeah, we made parts and pieces uh, both in Montreal and uh, when we were here, of course, it was a generally a repair shop. Uh, uh, we had to serve, part of our apprenticeship was uh, uh, served in the roundhouse where you uh, had the locomotives come in and uh, had to do general repairs as the uh, engineers would book them and uh, to keep the locomotives on the, the run and of course they uh, used to go in for quarterly and monthly inspections and of course once a year these uh, locomotives would come into the back shop and be completely tore down to, uh, and uh, built right back up from scratch again. Mm -hmm. So right. it means all the bushings and a lot of these uh, parts had to be replaced and right. a lot of machining took place to do that. Right. So uh, did you ever long to go out on the road and be on the, going up and down the, tr the tracks? On the well I'll tell you a little something about that. My dad was a uh, uh, and I was a uh, conductor on the railway, and his dad was likewise too. So, uh, my grandfather, he uh, came back from the Boer War, and uh, I guess about 1903 or something, he uh, hired on with this railway here. And my dad spent some uh, 40 years with the Re New York Central Railway, likewise. And the fact that I used to listen to, to my dad being called in the middle of the night, two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I didn't think that was uh, the kind of job that I wanted to be uh, uh, hanging on to very long. You like the day shift? Well, I liked the day shift. I didn't care for being called at any time of day or yeah. anything like that. You know, in those days, uh, this was a strictly a railway town, and if you were in one of the theaters here and uh, you had got called out on the road, they'd call the uh, call the theater and they'd. Uh, put on across the screen, uh, Jim Finley, you're wanted for first out at the New York Central, et cetera, et cetera. You had to and go. And you had to go. So that's how oh. close contact well, is. You even... couldn't even get go to uh, entertainment without being paged uh, to go to work. Wow. So now today uh, you've got a uh, conductor's uniform on, but you don't have. have to go out in the middle of the movie or in No, the this happened, I, I'll tell you about this, this happened to be my dad's uh, uniform, the last one he wore. Uh, it, by chance, I grabbed hold of it uh, one time uh, prior to him passing on, but uh, I was going to some event uh, that the high school people were having uh, relating to uh, an earlier age in St. Thomas, and I didn't know what to wear, so I went to him, and this is what I ended up getting, you see. And that so I kept it. He never got it back. Oh, boy. <laughs> and what, uh, what railroad is this? This is the, uh, it's a combination of uh, the hat, 
will say Penn Central, and uh, you'll see some of the buttons, they say New York Central. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Penn Central and the New York Central amalgamated, which I say was the worst thing that ever happened to the New York Central anyways, yeah. which was one of the finest and best railways in uh, North America. Yeah. John will argue about that there because <laughs> he was from the Pier Marquette. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it certainly was a fine, uh, fine railway, and they, uh, uh, they took care of their rail beds and everything else uh, uh, just like it was somebody's kitchen. Mm -hmm. They were tremendous days, really. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Don. Thank Appreciate you it. very much. Okay. Talking to you. My name is Doug Smith. I belong to the Elgin County Railway Museum Committee here in St. Thomas, Ontario. Today is August 31st, 1991, and our location is the Michigan Central Locomotive Shop uh, in St. Thomas on the main line. And uh, today we are going to be uh, celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Elgin Regiment and uh, we're taking out our 5700 former Canadian National Railways steam locomotive and we are now going to take you over to the locomotive shop doors and ask the conductor Don Stokes and the engineer Mr. Al Farnsworth to please open the doors. Bill? Yeah. Huh? Seems like the uh, engineer and conductor might have locked themselves in there. We have Mr. Al Farnsworth on the left and Mr. Don Stokes on the right. And there is the star attraction of our day, the 5700 locomotive. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a CN diesel locomotive which is coming out of the shop, which is going to be going around behind the shop and pushing the steam locomotive out into our view. Thank you. Stand, don't get in the front of the camera, Okay, here we have... Uh, a diesel locomotive which is going in behind the shop and is going to be pushing the steam locomotive tender and antique baggage car out of the shop to get ready to make up the train which will carry the Elgin Regiment into the station. And ladies and gentlemen here we have the uh, 5700 steam locomotive coming out of the shop. August 31st, 1991, and she's all shined up and waxed and uh, ready to be taken down to the station to hook up to three antique coaches from Port Stanley Terminal Rail and uh, will then be taken out to the industrial area, filled up with soldiers from the Elgin County Regiment and uh, brought into the station for a reenactment of the 125th anniversary of the Elgin Regiment. There we have Mr. Ken Verrill up on the fireman's seat and Mr. Don Stokes in the door. He's the conductor today. Thank you. 
And standing on the diesel locomotive step, we have Mr. Broadbear, who's the engineer for today. Harry's going by now. And up in the cab is Mr. Bill Turvey, chairman of the Elgin County Railway Museum Committee. Today is a beautiful, sunny day, August 31st, 1991, and we are at the Michigan Central Station here in St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada, and we're making up a train with a CN diesel locomotive, as you can see there in the background, some uh, antique coaches, which are on loan from the Port Stanley Terminal Railway, which is in Port Stanley, Ontario, Canada, just south of here on Lake Erie. And uh, we have uh, the antique baggage car and the former CN locomotive 5700, which uh, belong to the Elgin County Railway Museum. And this train is going out to the industrial area to pick up some soldiers from the Elgin County Regiment and we'll be bringing them into the station to celebrate their 125th anniversary plus a reenactment of their return from the Second World War. And this train is under the conductorship of Mr. Bill Lawrence who you can see just at the baggage car there with an engineer's uh, denim jacket on and no hat. And here he comes there, you can see his white shirt just by the tender there, he's walking down here now.
Hi ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the uh, train station in St. Thomas, Ontario, August 31st, 1991, and we're helping celebrate the 125th anniversary of the Elgin Regiment, and we have some people here who are helping celebrate, and first of all, I would like to speak to this gentleman here, and sir, would you please tell us your name? Good morning, uh, it's Chief Warrant Officer, uh, Harry Hall, I'm with Queen Jerk Rangers, uh, we're stationed in Toronto. Okay. And uh, what are you doing up here today, Harry? Uh, we were participating in the uh, tattoo last night, celebrating the 125th anniversary mm -hmm. of the Elgin Regiment, okay. and participating in the parade today. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is the connection of the Queen's Rangers with uh, the Elgin Regiment? The Queen's Jerk Rangers are a reconnaissance regiment today, uh, and so is the Elgin Regiment. We're both an Armoured Corps regiment from way back, and under our ties. We're here with a contingent of other bands that full cast doing a, doing a tattoo in the show. Right, okay. So. And what is that instrument you're holding in your hand, Harry? This is a piccolo. Uh, Could you maybe hold it up yeah, for sure. the people to see? Yeah. A piccolo? Yeah, the Queen's York Rangers is the only uh, flute and drum corps uh, band in uh, the Canadian Armed Forces today. I see. And uh, it's more of a tradition that, uh, of a flute band mm -hmm. that uh, going back to the core of drums. So nice. we are a little bit unique in the sense of our uh, yeah. the instrumentation. All we play is a C concert flute and a piccolo I and see. drums, of course. Right. And how many members do you have in your band? We have 23 with us on parade today, but we have as many as 30 members. Uh, we're all volunteers. Okay. Uh, the ba total band is volunteer uh, band, and uh, so we have different people working and away for weekends, so it's, it's hard to get the full unit out yeah. at any particular time. Well, it's sure nice to have you down here in uh, St. Thomas, and uh, thank you for uh, letting us interview you. Thanks a lot. It's okay. a beautiful city. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And here we have Hi. a lady. and. Uh, would you uh, mind telling us uh, who you are and what you're doing here today? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, my name is Lynn McIntyre, and I'm a counselor for the village of Dutton. And we were invited here because it's Dutton's 100th anniversary this year. I see. Hence the costume. Right. So, so we you're were all invited. Dressed up in yeah. Mm -hmm. costume. Yep. So we were invited yep. here to help celebrate the anniversary. So. Oh, excellent. And mm -hmm. what are those things you're holding in your hand, Lynn? Uh, well, they are commemorative. They are souvenirs for the wooden nickels. Oh, okay. For the village of Dutton, I believe they're going to be handing them out, so I'll right. give you one oh, right now. Oh, thank you very much. So, and uh, can I get anything for this in Dutton? Uh, if I collect uh, 100 of these, could I buy gasoline in Dutton? No. <laughs> Smile and a handshake, Smile and that's and about handshake. it. Well, look, thank you very much okay, for, for you. Uh, stopping by. Okay. okay. Good morning, sir, or should I say good afternoon, as uh, the uh, steam engine train just uh, pulled into the station here with a reenactment of the return of the Elgin Regiment from uh, World War II in 1946. And uh, you were on this train, sir, and would you mind introducing yourself? We're part of today's great contingent, contingent, pardon me. I'm Warrant Officer Roy Adams of the Lincoln and Wallen Regiment Band from St. Catharines, Ontario. And we're proud to be associated with the Elgin Regiment on this very historic occasion. Uh, we're, the band is here about 30 strong. Unfortunately, our buses didn't arrive to get us in town last night for the tattoo, and we were very disappointed. But we got an early start this morning, and we're here and raring to go. All right, sir. And you are the, are you the, uh, I'm what just, is this instrument here? In the well, chair? I'm playing a euphonium, or baritone, as some refer to it, and I am also assistant uh, director of the band. Assistant director? Yes. All right. Well, that's a beautiful uniform you have there. Uh, is this uh, a pith helmet you have on, or? Uh? It's a style of pith helmet. It's, uh, I believe, it's not a. It's a Westminster helmet, Westminster. and uh, they're kind of rare. But our band apparently wore them at the turn of the century, and so a few years ago, when we decided to get helmets, they they went for this style. Now it's hard to replace them. Maybe we made a mistake. <laughs> well, it sure looks good. And thank you very much, sir, thank for coming you. down today. My pleasure. Okay. Bye now. Go ahead. Excuse me, sir. Hi, how are how you today? How are you doing? Good, and yourself? Very well. And what is your name, sir? Gavin Watt. Gavin Watt. And uh, are you uh, in the Elgin Regiment, Gavin? Today I'm in the Elgin Regiment. I see. And uh, you are uh, participating here in the 125th anniversary? That's right. Right. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about this uniform? Is this a 1991 uniform? Or? No, this isn't a 1991. This is actually a 1944 battle dress. I see. So yeah. we have a 1940, and it's the 37 pattern, 1937 pattern of uniform worn all the way through Italy and Northwest Europe. I see. And uh, you have the uh, Elgin Regiment crest here. The flash, yeah. Flash. Would you mind just turning around a little bit to the camera Good. so we can get a shot of that? 
Oh, okay. And you are going to be marching in a parade through the We're city? On a march through the city. Yeah, okay. And uh, honor the regiment. Right, and how about this uh, duck rifle here? What is this? That's a, uh, a Lee Enfield, number four, Mark I star Lee Enfield, made in Long Branch Arsenal in 1945. A Long Branch, Ontario? Long Branch, Ontario. I see. Right, okay. Good. Well, uh, thank you very much for appearing here today. Good. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Take care. Yeah, Take thank care. you. In their 1944 battle dress, doing a little drill here. Here we are with the engineer of this train today, and uh, Mr. Al Farnsworth. And Al, would you please tell us a little bit about what's going on here today? Well, what we've done, first of all, uh, we prepared the engine for service to handle this affair with the Elgin Regiment, uh, brought it out of the shop and took it over here in front of the depot. And then after uh, a short period of time, uh, a, uh, we uh, were coupled to the train and then pulled from the depot back as far as Prestran uh, to wait for the Elgin Regiment to get in the cars and then bring them back here to the depot to reenact uh, what happened uh, during the war years uh, with the Elgin Regiment. Right, and. Uh you had uh, the engine all shined up today. Was there anything special uh, going on with the engine today, Al? Well, the only thing special was that uh, we had a generator in the tender, and that generator uh, was responsible for the smoke-like effect that we got from the stack. Uh, since the engine is not under its own power and has to be a pushed or shoved, depending on the direction you're moving, uh, then we tried to simulate uh, the effect that uh, we were actually in control of the train. I see. And uh, will this engine, the 5700, ever be under its own steam? Well, that question has been asked us several times today by interested people, and our answer to that was that uh, it probably will, uh, but uh, it'll take a considerable amount of money. But uh, uh, we uh, we feel that in view of our experience with this engine, that, and we've uh, uh, checked it from a, uh, one, one draw bar to the other, uh, we think that uh, it wouldn't take too much except in money to uh, put the engine under its own power. I see. And would it be uh, with uh, coal firing or would you uh, have some other type of fuel? No, we think that the... Uh, uh, it would be better to uh, still retain it as a coal-fired locomotive because all of the appliances necessary and the, uh, with the locomotive as well as the drafting conditions in the front end or the smoke box uh, all uh, would indicate that we should stay with the coal-fired locomotive. All right. Well, thanks very much, Al. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And have a nice day. Thank you. We have Mr. Ken Verrill here. And were you, uh, what was you, you doing in the engine today, Ken? Well, I was the brakeman. Oh, you were the brakeman today. And Don Hubert was the fireman, and Al Farnsworth was the engineer. Oh, and I see. Um, 
We were um, trying you to uh, emulate smoke today, and uh, with almost success. But uh, well, it looked good from uh, our vantage point. Well, we find that we got smoke coming out the stack, but we would like a little more, and uh, we're going to uh, improvise on it. And heaven help the clean laundries on the clothesline. Well, there's one thing in our favor: it's white smoke. White smoke. Okay. So. Um, yeah. And uh, now, what would a brakeman uh, normally be doing on a steam engine? Ken? He would be throwing switches. Throwing switches. Like when they come up to a switch, he would. Uh, engineer would stop the train, and he'd get a climb off and go down and throw the switch. The train would go through the switch, and then they would uh, turn around and throw the switch back. I see. That was his main job. So he'd have to have pretty strong legs to be climbing up and down that ladder all the time. He'd be very agile. He yeah. would definitely have to be agile. Yeah. And. Uh, the fireman, he kept an eye on the steam gauge and uh, made sure the water was only two inches in the glass and kept the steam pressure as high as he could keep it. Yeah. In this particular engine, it would be 275. I see. And uh, so he would float around 250. Mm -hmm. And you have been doing a lot of uh, renovating work on this engine. What is your latest project, Ken? Well, our latest project is getting smoke out of the stack and the bell working, mm -hmm. which we now have both, but now we're going to go a little further and get the stoker engine, which runs coal out of the tender, into uh, running it by air to, to kind of emulate again that the stoker's running. I see. So, but um, there's not too many things left that we have to get operational by air. I see. But it was meant for steam, but our chances of doing it steam are very remote. Mm -hmm. It would be too costly. Boiler-wise would have to be all checked, and uh, air appurtenances would all have to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd have to get government cards, which would ensue every monthly or every three months mm -hmm. inspection of everything. And to have it in steam pressure state would cost too much money. I see. It's possible to do it, yes, but down the road. It's not practical at this time. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for talking to us, mm -hmm. Ken. Appreciate it.